We are back at it again, looking at coasters that get way too much love or not enough attention and breaking it down by manufacturer. If you missed part one of this series, click the card above where we looked at Aero, Gerslauer, GCI, Intamin, and others. Today, we'll tackle the rest of the major manufacturers. And just keep in mind that this is solely based on my experience, so it will only include coasters that I've ridden. This is part two of each manufacturer's most overrated and underrated coasters. Let's start part two with the Swiss manufacturer Bollinger and Mabillard, or B&M. They've made the most coasters that I've ridden from any manufacturer, with 61, so I had a lot to choose from. For the most overrated B&M, I'm going with a pick that will make me very unpopular, Kumba at Busch Gardens Tampa. This is a good ride. It has a good terrain setting. It has seven inversions, but it's not an elite coaster. Nobody seems to think that Kraken or Riddler's Revenge deserves to be in people's overall top 20s, but somehow Kumba keeps finding its way there. When I first rode this in 2018, I thought it reminded me a lot of Riddler's Revenge, if it had sit-down trains. So I walked off thinking that it was a good old-school B&M, but I wasn't even sure if it qualified for top 3 in the park. I didn't think it was any more intense than any other B&M looper. The hell roll was totally overhyped. I just wasn't that impressed with this, so it's an easy choice for me as the most overrated B&M. As for the most underrated B&M, I have another coaster I feel strongly about. This is Raging Bull at Six Flags Great America. People dump all over this as the worst B&M hyper, but I couldn't disagree more. It's one of B&M's original hypers, and it has a non-traditional layout. It's not designed like Behemoth or Intimidator. It's not a simple out and back layout. It's more of a hyper twister, so it doesn't have as many repetitive moments of airtime, but it still has plenty of airtime, and some of it is incredibly strong in the back row. Most notably, the spectacular first drop and the drop off the mid-course breaks. This is my third favorite B&M Hyper, and it finds a spot in my top 10. And every time I've gone to Great America, it's blown me away, and I can't get enough of it. So it doesn't deserve the hate that it gets. Whenever someone complains about Raging Bull, I just point to the Hyper Twister at my home park of Magic Mountain and tell them it could be so much worse. How about Vekoma? This was a lot more difficult than the other manufacturers because it's hard to find an overrated Vekoma at least from the ones that I've ridden. If I was able to get overseas to ride Formula or Let Coaster, which get a lot of praise, maybe I'd find one is a little overrated. But the Vacomas in America are generally despised. The only one that I could think of that gets a little too much praise is weird because it's at such an obscure park, but it's Aftershock at Silverwood. I might even be guilty of overrating this giant inverted boomerang, ranking it number one at the park and number two in the Pacific Northwest. It's a really fun ride, and it gives me nostalgic flashbacks to Deja Vu at Magic Mountain, but it runs rough, and at the end of the day, it's still a boomerang. I don't think it's grossly overrated, but it's the only Vacoma in America that I could think of that gets a little more praise than it deserves. Finding an underrated Vacoma was a lot easier. In fact, I have a couple contenders. Riddler Revenge at Six Flags New England is a very enjoyable SLC because of the vest restraints, but it's still just an SLC, so I'm pushing it aside for an underrated coaster that also got a train overhaul in recent years, Blue Hawk at Six Flags over Georgia. Back when it was Ninja, it was pretty despised like most of the Vacoma loopers. It's funny that Ninja was the big bad ride that was the final destination of the Griswolds in the 2015 film Vacation. Now that it's Blue Hawk with those vest restraints, I found this ride to be very enjoyable. It has a unique layout with funky inversions, incredible head choppers, and it has a setting over the lake. And it's very smooth, at least in my opinion. It also brings the intensity. I still hear people saying that they hate this ride, and I don't see why. It's got that old school intense feeling of a looper that you'd find from Arrow and Vacoma, just with good restraints and no pain. I think that a lot of Arrow and Vacoma loopers could benefit from the type of makeover that Blue Hawk got for the 2016 season. Keeping with the steel coaster theme, let's take a look at Premier Rides. They build launch coasters almost exclusively, most of which have short layouts. Most of the time, a short layout is fine because of the type of ride that it is. But there is one ride that could stand to be so much longer, and because of that, I think it gets overrated among coaster enthusiasts. This is Full Throttle at Six Flags Magic Mountain. I did a pros and cons video about this because it was a perfect candidate for the format. It has great hang time, a good second launch, an intense final drop, but the cons are hard to overlook. The launch is weak, there are breaks on the final drop, and most of all, it's incredibly short. 
It would have been so much better if Six Flags and Premiere could have added some extra elements after that drop, especially since it would have been amazing not to have been slowed down while diving down that vertical drop. Despite this, people still rave about Full Throttle, and it's a huge crowd pleaser. But for me, it's kind of an afterthought at my home park. I even think Premiere's newest ride at the park, West Coast Racers, is a little better. The underrated Premiere coaster was harder to find. I love Mr. Freeze, but I think people see this as the amazing coaster that it is. So I'm gonna go with Superman Ultimate Flight at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. The Skyrocket 2 model. This was actually the original Skyrocket 2 when it debuted in 2012. And this is just one of two in the US that has lap bars, the other being Phobia Fear Coaster at Lake Compounds. Skyrocket 2s are actually great rides, which is why the SeaWorld chain is filling their parks with them the last couple years. It pulls some insane forces with its forward and backward launches, it has incredible hang time on the inline twist 150 feet off the ground, and it has crazy lateral ejector over the dive back to the ground. It's a short ride, but it has a very compact layout, and it's super intense, so I think it's great for what it is, and it shouldn't be overlooked just because it's been cloned so many times. And with the lap bar restraints instead of the comfort collars, Superman stands out from the rest. Moving on to a couple wooden coaster manufacturers, starting with Philadelphia Toboggan Coasters, or PTC. When I talked about this old school company last time, I said my favorite coaster I've ridden from them was Phoenix at Knoebels. Well, surprise, surprise, I also think Phoenix is the most overrated PTC. This coaster gets just about as much hype as any coaster out there. It's good enough to be in my top 50 and top my list of PTCs, but it wasn't the insane out of your seat standing ejector airtime machine that people made it out to be. It had a really solid run of airtime before the final breaks, and when it was over, I was seriously questioning if that was all the hype was about and if that was really what deserved back-to-back -back Golden Ticket Awards for Best Wooden Coaster. People talk about the airtime on Coaster at Playland in a similar way, but that airtime legitimately feels dangerous. This was basically some good floater moments, mainly at the tail end of the ride. I got five rides in the rain, so maybe some rides on a hot day would run faster. As for the most underrated PTC, it's a coaster very similar to Phoenix, but it gets a whole lot less attention and all you have to do is head southwest through Pennsylvania to get to Hershey Park and ride Comet. Just like Phoenix, this was an airtime-filled classic PTC Woody with just buzz bars. I have this ranked a few spots behind Phoenix on my overall list because I think Phoenix is a little stronger, but there's not much gap in quality between the two. But the gap in hype and attention is enormous. Comet gets buried in the strong Hershey Park lineup. It literally gets buried under Skyrush, which was built on top of it. But Comet is an amazing classic coaster, and I think this is a contender for the best ride in the park, and it ranked fourth when I ranked all the coasters in Pennsylvania. A much newer wooden coaster manufacturer is the Gravity Group, formed from the engineers of the defunct CCI that we talked about in part one. Gravity Group has taken some risks and done things that have turned heads since they started making coasters in 2005. And as a result, I don't think any of their coasters I've ridden are bad. But the most overrated coaster in their portfolio is Ravine Flyer 2 at Waldemere. This 2008 wooden coaster definitely gets the hype, but I don't think it deserves it. I rode this four times and I really enjoyed it, but it falls outside my top 10 wooden coasters. I thought that between the roughness and the PTC trains, the ride experience fell short. If they smoothed it out and put timber liners on it, it could crack my top 10 woodies and my overall top 50. After all, on one of my four rides, my lap bar actually came up a little bit on one of the rough patches, and I really got to feel the airtime that this coaster has to offer, and it was great, especially the hills that serve as the bridge over the road. But on the rest of my rides, the rough patches just ended up stapling me, and it was hard to enjoy the rest of the ride after that. Still a good ride, and one worth getting to Northwestern Pennsylvania to ride, but definitely overrated. As far as underrated Gravity Group coasters go, I'm gonna pick Mind Blower at Fun Spot Kissimmee. I had one issue with this ride. It was unusually rough for a new coaster. I rode it in 2018, and it had just opened in 2017, so I was expecting a smooth ride, and I didn't get it. That being said, I rode it eight times anyway because the ride is just that good. It has a great drop, the signature element is the barrel roll over the station, which is awesome, and the rest of the ride is full of compact turns and great airtime moments. So even though they screwed up the ride with the roughness, they did a great job with the layout, and the next time I'm in Florida, I want to marathon this thing again. Let's look at Zero, which is another tough one to judge because there aren't that many Zero thrill coasters out there, and there isn't much buzz around Zero. So my overrated and underrated picks are on the milder side. For the overrated coaster, I chose Verbolton at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. This is a family-style thrill coaster that focuses on the theming as you drive your car through the Black Forest, 
get launched a couple times, experience a cool drop track, and then finish off the ride with the signature dive over the river. For Bolton had big shoes to fill when it replaced the beloved aero suspended coaster Big Bad Wolf in 2012, and it even made my North American bucket list going into 2019. I thought the ride was a little underwhelming. I rode it once and I would have liked to get one more, but the line was huge so I was okay skipping it. It didn't quite live up to my expectations, so I reluctantly classify this as Zero's most overrated coaster. Their most underrated coaster is also my favorite coaster by them, and that's Wicked at Lagoon. My first visit there was in 2017, and I liked this almost as much as Cannibal, mainly for that unique launch up and over the top hat, which is a feeling I don't know if I felt on any other coaster. After the Zero G roll, the ride doesn't do a whole lot, but the vertical launch over the top hat is something that every coaster enthusiast needs to experience. It was in my top 30 after 2017, but it's fallen out since, but it's still a star attraction at Lagoon. Here are a couple more manufacturers that I want to mention that don't necessarily fit into this list. The first one is SNS. Is there an overrated SNS? Not that I've ridden. Maybe when I get on Steel Curtain or Max Force, I'll change my mind, but I've never ridden an SNS that I thought got too much hype. I do have a couple contenders for an underrated SNS coaster. Powder Keg at Silver Dollar City has a surprisingly intense launch and a cool layout. And I just rode El Loco a few times this year, and it has some amazing elements for being such a small, compact coaster. But I'm gonna piss off Airtime Mike and choose their free spins as their most underrated model. A lot of people roll their eyes at these free spins because Six Flags was packing their parks with them between 2015 and 2018, and they became a dime a dozen. But if you look past that, these are actually really fun rides. And you never get the same ride twice, which is sometimes a good thing and sometimes a bad thing. I've had really disappointing rides. One flip, one flip. And others that were insane. That was nuts. That was pure insanity. It's crazy-anity. That was crazy-anity. Oh, no, really. It's total mayhem. It was devious. I got like a whole bunch of flips, a whole bunch of stalls. So yeah. So I would actually like to have this at my home park because I would ride it all the time to get the different experience each time. The flipping is insane, but it's not painful or awkward, and I almost always come off happy that I got on. And after experiencing the worst coaster ever built in Green Lantern at my home park, these SNS free spins are basically world-class coasters in comparison, which maybe gives me an inflated opinion of them. But seriously, people, look past the clone nature of these things and appreciate the ride for what it is. The other manufacturer that doesn't really fit in on this list is one that I didn't even discuss in the best worst coaster video, and that's Moror. For me, they're basically Wild Mouse coasters, spinners, and the underrated coaster I'm choosing for this video, Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket. Some people like this coaster, but it seems like most people hate it for being really rough or boring. I rode this a bunch of times in 2012 when I was in my GP phase, and for those of you who don't know what that is, it was when I didn't really care about or follow coasters which was basically my life between 2004 and 2014. I didn't think too much about the logistics of Rip Ride Rocket, I would just select the music track for the onboard sound and enjoy the ride. Those rides in January 2012 were some of the most fun rides I've had on any coaster. Maybe the ride has gotten worse over the last 8 years, I'll probably get back there to ride it at some point over the next couple years, but when I see all the hate it gets, all I can remember is how much fun I had on it, so I consider it underrated. Mara doesn't have any overrated rides, the spinners are good, even better than the Gerstlauer spinners, and the Wild Mouse coasters are Wild Mouse coasters, so that's why Mara is a tough manufacturer to slot into this video. Back on track with mock rides, and they have a wide variety of coasters out there. Their signature model is their multi-launch coaster, but that produced what I consider their most overrated coaster, and that's Copperhead Strike at Carowinds. This park really needed a launch coaster and they got it in 2019 with the very expensive Copperhead Strike, but I was left unimpressed. I know that people told me that I rode it at an awful time, in the morning and in the rain, and they also told me that based on my footage, it was running very slow. I still thought the launches, hang time, and ejector airtime moments would make this my favorite new credit of 2019, but it ended up coming in fifth place. The launches are slow, but that's a given for basically every mock rides launch coaster, and the lap bars really tightened on me quickly which made the airtime hills and hang time moments less intense. I felt this coaster kind of meandered around especially in the second half, and despite being a long ride, I felt that my three rides in the front and back was enough, and I felt like I was ready to move on to the better coasters in the park. I don't know when I'll be back at Carowinds to give it another shot, so for now my opinion will have to stand as it is. Mock Rides has one coaster that's close to home for me, and it does not get the love it deserves because it's seen as a family coaster, but it's so much more than that for me. It's Sierra Sidewinder at Knott's Berry Farm. Not only do I love this spinning coaster, Sophie is absolutely addicted to it. It doesn't look like much, 
and it's situated in Camp Snoopy, but this pulls some serious Gs. This is most evident in the Helix where it feels like you're going to scrape your face against the ground. It doesn't have to go that fast to feel like you're hauling because of how compact it is. And when you add in the spinning element, I actually rank this higher than the B&M Invert Silver Bullet in the same park. Don't overlook Sierra Sidewinder. It's a must ride when you visit Knott's. We're going to close this video out with a manufacturer that's absolutely loaded, and that's RMC. Everyone talks about RMC coasters and has a strong opinion on them, and I've ridden all of them in the US, so I'm right there with everybody else expressing these strong opinions one way or the other. I love all of RMC's creations, so I don't want to bash any of them, but there are two that really stand out as very overrated. I'm not choosing this one, but I feel like it deserves a mention. Outlaw Run at Silver Dollar City. I was expecting a lot from this coaster, and I got a weird first ride, and that made me want to come back around and try again. And it was after that second ride that I realized that the original RMC Topper Track Woody was really lacking what the other RMCs had. It was a lot rougher than the other RMCs I had ridden, and the elements didn't really pop for me. Mainly due to the rough patches that were stapling me. I wasn't all that impressed with this highly rated RMC. But my official pick for the most overrated RMC is the Raptor model, Railblazer and Wonder Woman. I think these get so much love with enthusiasts because they're incredibly intense, and they have the best pacing of any coaster I've ever seen. I really enjoyed every ride I've gotten on the Raptors, but there are two things that make me rank these dead last among the RMCs that I've ridden. The over-the-shoulder restraints and the ride duration. I've seen so many people rank Railblazer in the top two or three coasters in California, but for it to get that much praise, I need a ride that isn't over so fast. I think that Gold Striker outshines Railblazer at Great America, and Iron Rattler definitely is the class of Six Flags Fiesta Texas over Wonder Woman. I also have two RMCs that I feel are very underrated, and the honorable mention here is Joker at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. This coaster is often passed off as the worst RMC, and I agree that it's in the lower half of US RMCs, but it's nowhere near the very bottom. It has very solid airtime, it does the inversions better than any other RMC, and it has a good ride duration. I prefer this over several other RMCs, but the coaster I chose as the most underrated RMC is Wicked Cyclone at Six Flags New England. I think people respect it, but they tend to stick it in the middle of the pack. For me, there's only one RMC that's better, and that's Steel Vengeance. I even prefer this over Lightning Rod, especially after it's neutering after its first season. Wicked Cyclone is not very tall, but it has a masterful layout with incredible elements and it delivers a long ride, almost too long. It barely has enough steam to make it through that third lap, which makes me wish that they added a little height to it when they overhauled it for the 2015 season. This was my first RMC and I got more rides in 2018 to bolster my high opinion of it, and it still enjoys a spot inside my top four overall coasters. So that's going to do it for this series. Let me know what you think of my picks in the comments below, and if you're curious to see my personal ranking of these overrated and underrated coasters, I will make that video in the future, so stay tuned. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.